Can you cure type 2 diabetes? Let's find out. <laughs> Welcome back, or welcome if you're a first time viewer to the Diabetes Diet Guy. I'm Mark, I'm gonna be taking you through this video. And this video is really in response to a article I saw in the Daily Mail of all things, that was looking at type two diabetes remission. Now, as you can see, it's a typical newspaper article looking to get clicks. So it reads, can a soup and shake diet cure type two diabetes? Now, what this is referring to is previous um, research that happened from about 2017 onwards, looking at whether or not we could push type two diabetes into remission. So big difference between cure and remission, guys. Now, obviously, if you go into remission, technically you don't have it anymore, but what we are lacking is the long-term data to see if actually it leads to a cure overall. And we started to build on this research as time's gone by. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. I'm gonna take you through it to see if you can cure slash put your diabetes into remission and what the evidence is for that. Now, I've done a previous video looking at this research called the Direct Trial Type 2 Diabetes um, Remission. I'll link to it at the end of the video. And so what the article is referring to is a diet that was prescribed to um, 150 patients and it was 800 calories a day. And basically we were seeing that if we could induce dramatic weight loss in patients, does that then correct their blood glucose levels back to normal levels? And what they found was that for the patients that lost a significant amount of weight, the answer was yes. 46% out of the 150 went into type two diabetes remission, meaning they weren't taking any medications to control their glucose levels and their glucose levels were back to normal. And this 800 calorie a day diet was typically done with meal replacements, so shakes and soups. Now, obviously well, alongside that, you typically take a fiber supplement to help your bowels and usually you'll take a multivitamin to ensure you're getting all your micronutrients. And they did this for about three to five months initially before going on to a maintenance diet, which was then going to be their long-term lifelong um, diet because the second you change what you're doing, you're gonna get different results. So it's expected that once you got off the 800 calories and went on to the maintenance calories, you've gained a little bit of weight, but the idea is then that you'd stay at that weight forevermore. Now the article in question from the newspaper was saying that this has the potential to um, achieve 500 type 2 diabetes remissions per week. Now, in the UK, there are roughly around, we don't know exactly, but three to five million cases of diabetes, and the overwhelming majority of those are type 2 diabetes. A lot of those cases are lifestyle induced. So basically, we're not looking after ourselves as well as we should be. We're carrying too much fat, and metabolically, we start to become inefficient and not as well as we previously were. And as a result, your body can't control your glucose levels, so they start to rise. So by inducing weight loss, um, what you start to do is turn back the clock metabolically. You start to mobilize fat from the liver, the pancreas, and the cells of the body, and it allows your body to start working as it once did, which then helps the diabetes. For anyone interested, this trial was called the DIRECT trial. So you can look this up. It was conducted up in Newcastle. Um, if medical literature is your thing, then it's a great read. If it's not, then it's, it can be quite boring. Like I said, I've got a video that I'll link to at the end of the, um, this video, but you know, it just give you a bit more information about that. Now they looked at this cohort of patients at year two and around a third of that initial 46% had uh, maintained remission. Now, the thing about this is this is not brand new research. This has happened before. There's research looking at this going back into the eighties. And what we find is typically is that after about five years, patients are back to where they started. Whether or not they then get a legacy effect where their glucose levels have been lower for a period of time and then go back to where they were is another question. Chances are actually having lower blood glucose levels for a prolonged period will actually be beneficial. It makes sense, right? Um, but it's not something that's widely studied necessarily. But regardless, what I wanted to give you was my thoughts on this diet as a whole whether or not it's something you should be pushing for. So the first thing I'd say about an 800 calorie day, a day diet is it's not my preferred choice. If I'm prescribing, and I don't really prescribe diets to patients anyway, I tend to work with them and see what works for them because everyone's different, different likes, different preferences, different lifestyles, different exercise habits. But if you're going to give someone a diet, 800 calories, it's not the most sustainable diet in the world, and it wasn't too long ago that we used to talk about this as an extreme crash diet and avoid it at all costs. But because of this evidence, suddenly it's become something that's being rolled out actually across the NHS. We're doing patient groups, 
We try and get people to do this, obviously under medical and dietitian supervision, um, and actually help them get into type two diabetes remission. Now I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute because obviously that's a good thing. But in terms of the 800 calories itself, I think it's a bit extreme. And the one thing I really wanna hone in on is if you're going onto a diet, which then you then go onto a maintenance um, stage afterwards, my kind of thinking is why not just start with the healthy lifestyle in the first place? Because if you do the 800 calorie a day diet, and then you just go back to the status quo of what you were doing before, you're just gonna rebound, typical yo-yo weight loss. So you need to make dietary and lifestyle changes by definition to go onto the maintenance period. So if you're having to do that anyway, why can't we just start with that and actually help people get, um, get going with their changes that they're going to ultimately have to sustain lifelong? Because this does need to be lifelong if you want lifelong effects. If I had it all my own way, what I really like patients to do is focus on getting them as active as possible, bringing up their fitness, getting them moving, and then we match the diet to the exercise that they're doing rather than the other way around. So my personal approach is um, optimize fitness to the best that we can because for some patients that ship has sailed um, and actually the time to get fit is long gone. But if we can, that's what I like to do. And then sort of work out how many calories or well, not even calorie counting really, just trying to get a diet that works for them that helps them lose weight seamlessly essentially. You don't want it to feel like a chore, which this could very well feel like. I know some patients go onto it and absolutely thrive, but no one can sustain this forever. I think my other problem with this is it kind of feeds that diet culture. And it's something I'm really not into, you know, always trying different approaches. You've tried Atkins, you've tried paleo, you've tried keto, now you're trying low calorie. It You're just flipping and jumping around all the time. You just need to be consistent with the behaviors that we know are good for us, regular exercise, healthy eating, and stick with that over a long period. It's it's not really much more complex than that, but the application of that is the hard bit, which I completely understand. And don't get me wrong, I'm no saint. But I think one thing that we need to get people out of the mindset of is all or nothing dieting. People are either on it or they're on it. They're either on it or off it, as opposed to thinking about, well, actually, if I'm just consistent most of the time, I can have the day out, I can have the odd piece of cake, I can have a few beers of a weekend. Um, and actually it all ties together. So we just, and it gives you a good average. So what we're looking for is a good average over the long haul, which I don't think this really necessarily achieves. Another thing I really don't like about this is actually when you're on this diet, the advice is to not exercise because you don't have many calories left in the tank. So if you're burning up more calories from exercising, it can be quite dangerous. So actually when we prescribe it, we say don't exercise whilst you're on this diet. Now just metabolically, fitness, everything, you know, that just feels wrong to me. So, I mean, of course, if you're on it, then you need to be safe with it. But you can probably see how I struggle as a dietitian and someone that's previously done sport and exercise science, personal training, and how that doesn't really fit into my general approach and philosophy surrounding fitness and exercise and nutrition. But let's look at some of the pros. I think one of the big pros of this is it gives people hope Type 2 diabetes used to be thought of as a progressive disease. It's just gonna get worse and you just gotta deal with it. Now we know that actually you can move up and down the scale and the, the concept of remission gives people hope and something to work towards, which can be quite motivating, I think. On that note, in terms of motivation, sometimes I find that with clients and patients, they're unable to get themselves going because the small changes that they've made, which may seem huge to them, hasn't been enough to initiate the weight loss that they want, so they get disheartened and they quit. Whereas something like this has big trophy weight loss at the beginning, so it can really invigorate people and keep them motivated. And as you lose more and more weight, it just reiterates and feeds into that. And then you might actually be more motivated then to go onto the maintenance stage and maintain the losses that you've already achieved. So I can definitely see how that's beneficial. Of course, the other big thing about this is if you're going on this diet, more than likely you have type 2 diabetes. There will be some people that go on a low calorie diet that don't, but if you're going on the type 2 diabetes remission diet, then obviously you have type 2 diabetes. Now that means that you have a metabolic problem. Your body is not coping as well as it previously once did. And therefore, the argument is, what's worse for you? 800 calories a day for three to five months and shift that excess weight, 
or continue with blood sugars that are above what they should be, which we know if they, if they remain high for a period of months and years can cause complications, particularly with your cardiovascular system, but glucose gets everywhere. So it can cause multiple comorbidities over the long haul. And we do know that type two diabetes contributes 10% of the NHS budget. Well, diabetes as a whole, but the vast majority of that is type two diabetes makes up 10% of the NHS budget. The vast majority of that is preventable. So if we can start turning back the clock and preventing complications, we're gonna go a long way to one, improving people's quality of life, preventing complications, and easing the burden on the NHS's budget, which we know is already stretched. So let's summarize. Like anything, there's always pros and cons. It's not just one way or the other, and I always like to give it a balanced view. I think overall, it does have its place, but it's not my preferred approach from a dietitian, a purist point of view, if you will. But I do appreciate not everyone's gonna be able to achieve the necessary exercise levels to then accommodate such a diet that keeps it sustainable. Um, because obviously, if you're pretty sedentary, you don't need a lot of calories in the first place. So if you're only needing 15, 16, 1700 calories a day because you're pretty immobile, then to lose weight, you have to cut that back even further. Um, and that's when it becomes unsustainable, when you're constantly having to cut back on your diet and you can't have things that you like because it just makes you gain weight. Whereas someone that's able to get more active, it opens up margin for their diet. They have a margin of error. And if you have that, it means you can eat things that you like and still lose weight. So it's much more sustainable. So this definitely has a place for patients that, um, one, obviously have type 2 diabetes, might not be as active as they'd like to be, or perhaps they're as active as they like to be and they just don't want to exercise. Fair enough. Um, and it can definitely have metabolic benefits. So definitely there are pros. I get that. One thing I really want to stress, though, is there is nothing magic about this number. 800 calories a day is not the magic number that then suddenly induces type 2 diabetes remission. It's all about weight loss. So it doesn't matter how you get there. If you achieve the same weight loss with 800 calories a day or a healthy living um, exercise based regime, you're going to end up in the same place from your glucose levels. Now, of course, there are other diets out there. Um, it's beyond the scope of this video to discuss the pros and cons of them. But I have done videos on them. If you're looking on, if you're watching this on the blog, go to the diet section. It's all there. If you're looking on the um, YouTube, there's also a diet section where we weigh up the pros and cons. Some of the videos were filmed back in the day before I was getting too good with YouTube. I'm not particularly great now, but definitely it was an amateur back then. So I do apologize for the quality of some of those videos if you want to take an interest. Anyway, we'll leave it there, guys. Hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found that useful. If you did, like, share, um, subscribe. Really helps us out, gets us up the YouTube algorithm, and ultimately gets us in front of more people that we can help. If you need an extra helping hand, visit diabetesdietguide.com, where we've got free videos and information for you to browse. Or if you need an extra helping hand, we do offer consultancy services where we'll work with you one-to-one -one and help you reach your lifestyle goals with our coaching services, facilitation, support, and ultimately expertise in these areas. So anyway, we'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.